Hi folks, welcome back to the deep dive. In this video, we're looking at a trick to help you get more of a traditional feel timing in, in your hands. As with all my videos, there's downloads in the video description, freebies uh, and extra content to support you as you go through this material. If you're arriving here without having gone through the Discover and Beera pack and the earlier Learn to Play and Beera videos, then I totally recommend that and then you'll be up to speed with what we're covering here. Cool, so everything we've looked at so far has really been um, quite chord oriented, so about the note options during each chord. Um, and in this video, we're sort of switching things up a little bit and adding a new dimension. We're going to explore timing and the feel of your music. So we're going to take a traditional variation of Naomi Musasa. Um, you could choose a different variation entirely and, and apply the same approach, it's fine. You can choose a variation that you've created. It's completely up to you. But I'm going to use that one as an example for this neat trick that um, opens up something new in your playing uh, that you may not have already. Because um, so many folk that are learning uh, Mbira um, who haven't grown up listening to the music um, because they they haven't got that sort of awareness, that sort of way of hearing hearing music, they've they've probably got a sort of four beat preference. It's, it's predominant flavor in a lot of popular Western music. Uh, and also it's been our four beats has been a sort of emphasis in the Naomi Musasa style chord awareness. So it's likely that if you've been playing that traditional variation of Naomi Musasa, you've been playing like this. One, two, three, four, 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 one, two, three, four. And we're going to switch that up a little bit and uh, fix it for you today. Cool. So four beat chords, three beat feel. There's a parallel process here going on in traditional Mbira music. Uh, predominantly, there's four beat chords with a three beat feel. So um, yeah, the most of the traditional stuff is going to have this, this flavor. It's going to be useful for you. Our first chord, chord four. Our first group of three beat fill. I'm going to tell you what this represents in a minute, but it's a three beat pattern. Um, notice that it doesn't quite match up at the end here. We've got an extra note hanging off in our first uh, chord uh, or beat. So if we bring this down, try and start it again. We're going to see that it resolves uh, on the third chord. We're in chord six now, our second chord. Let's move to chord one, our last chord, and at the end of that, our three beat pattern matches up nicely. And we can start again on the second part of the song, chord four, chord six, and then we get to chord two, and it resolves at the end. Uh, we could continue on and on, but for each part, there's three chords and four lots of this three beat thing. Um, what that three beat thing is, uh, there's so many different ways to talk about it, but I'm gonna create a little pattern for you, a three beat pattern in our chords, um, and we're gonna remove every third note, so we end up playing here, here, and then rest across the whole song structure. Let's see what that looks like. This is a quick example of something that's got a sort of next level to it, Hang around for that and you'll see how we can sort of extract something from this, this exercise. So I take away every third stroke. Instead of playing for our first chord, I'm gonna take away that third stroke. Uh, we'll get to the next chord. And so on. Oops, sorry. I've got this notated in the downloads for you guys, but effectively I've just taken the same pattern, the grey notated traditional Naomi Musasa uh, variation from the beginning of the Discover and Beera pack and taken away every third note. Um, and that leaves us with this little pattern of pairs of notes. And if we emphasise the second of every pair of notes, so do, 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 there's a, this is our three beat pattern, this one is a rest. Do, 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 do. And sorry, I just dropped my beer there. Uh, and emphasize this one here. We're finding a sort of 
uh, a way to orient ourselves within the song uh, and then we start introducing these notes back in and we, you're going to end up playing exactly the same pattern with your hands but with a different sort of awareness, a different orientation. I'm going to tell you what this point of emphasis that we're, we're emphasising represents. Um, it's really important that you understand what it means uh, for us in the context of traditional and bureau music and the possibilities it opens up for us. But first of all, let's try this. Uh, playing the pairs, removing every third note, emphasising this one. I'm going to start stamping my foot and I'll make a vocalisation as well, like dun, 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 every time we get to it. I'd love you to do the same. The more different ways you can use your body, uh, whether that's stamping, vocalisation, dance move, a little nod of your head, I mean, I'm nodding my head while I'm saying it, or even moving your beer a little bit, the more um, you can make it sort of physical acknowledgement of that moment in time, the more avenues you're providing for uh, the learning to, to get inside you. Uh, and then we, as we introduce the new, um, the extra notes that we've taken out, then you're going to still have that like kinesthetic anchor in the song and you'll be playing exactly the same thing but with a different, uh, different feeling to it. Let's see what happens. I'm stamping now. Vocalizations. So you're going to sort of stagger, you're bringing the notes back in and back out until you can play the whole thing with that emphasis. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. Um, it'll take you sort of, it'll still be stops and starts and I, I'm not expecting, if this is brand new to you, I'm not expecting you're going to get it done in a day or even in a week. Um, it's something that you should sort of come back to every now and then, try and build up and eventually you're going to find that you can play um, this song that once felt like it was one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, with this feeling where it's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Um, it'll take you a little while, but once you've got that, then we've got these moments in time in the song that we can refer to as the beat. Now that language is a kind of Western approximation and it's been adopted by a lot of Zimbabwean and Bira players as well. Um, this moment that they're calling the beat. Um, so what it represents for us in this exercise is a point of emphasis. We've been playing pairs of notes and we're emphasizing the second one and we're calling it the beat. The beat, the beat, the beat, the beat. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun. We've got a little rest here, the beat. So for us, it's been a point of emphasis, but um, I'd rather that you thought of it as a, a point of orientation. For example, the Hoshe players, they're like some uh, maracas or shakers that accompany Imperial music. They play a pattern that sounds a little bit like this. Um, and for many people that hear that sound, they think, oh, the second one is the beat. Um, it's actually not. Our uh, ho-sho, short, sharp note, and either a swoosh or a little sort of shuffle. There's a few different styles. This short, sharp one falls on the beat, or what we're calling the beat. Dancers' steps often fall on the beat. Clapping and drumming... Uh, and other Imbira players 
will orient themselves around this beat. They're not always marking it out, but among everybody that's there, it's a point of a common point of orientation. So some advanced and beer players might be playing a, a sort of two note pattern, uh, picking something out in their playing where this one matches up with our point of orientation or this one does or even where the rest matches up with this point of orientation but they know where it is and for us today by emphasizing it in our traditional and name and recessa variation we're sort of making our first steps to to find it so that we we end up with an orientation point uh, that's called the beat uh, by many mbira players but it's not necessarily a point of emphasis awesome i really hope you enjoy having some time exploring this it's um it's going to add another level to your playing so far we've sort of been really focused on yeah what notes you can play in what order but here we're adding another dimension to it uh where it's sort of going to give it another flavor um and this this parallel process is this is kind of uh yeah, I don't want to scare you off. This We're scratching the surface here. Um, next video, we're going to return to our kind of old style. We're going to be looking at more note options and getting left-hand patterns in your hand. The video is going to be called 4-Beat uh, Freedom. So we're looking at 4-Beat chord structure and note options and freedom exercises, kind of like the left-hand liberation, but now including all of our, uh, our complete chords. So what was that video seven and nine left hand liberation and complete chords check those out before returning to the, the video next week um thanks so much to all of you that are subscribing now that you're downloading the extra resources awesome and um you're supporting me to create employment for the zimbabwean musicians that i'm working with at mbira.online uh absolute nice one um High five to you guys. And also, I made that extra Embira Essentials pack. That's in the video description. You can grab that. If you can hit subscribe, um, any sort of shares and likes and comments as well. If you've got something that comes up and you want to ask, um, let me know. Nice one. Cheers. Good luck with this. I hope you enjoy it. And I look forward to sharing more with you next week. Bye for now.